Sector B. What condition should I expect to find the ground crew in? Daniel went missing days ago. Chris is presumed dead. We are expecting to find Sarah, Mikhail, and Sochi in a stable condition. Chris is dead? He was involved in an accident. All right, so I can close that door behind me and go through that one. But I don't want to leave... this. Okay. Well, that works. I thought I needed one of those in order to get the other. I did not. <laughs> you were sure of it immediately. To the ground team. Unfortunately, there is not a direct route. The base is buried under ice to protect it from the radiation of space. Similar to the Mars base. Similar. Europa's base is slightly deeper into the surface. There is more radiation present from solar events on Mars. But Mars's surface is denser than that of Europa. Okay, we got another one of these. It doesn't seem to pick up people, so... Hmm. Where are we going? Oh, there is a thing. Oh, but it's in the wrong spot. Got it. I did a super good job of solving puzzles in The Witness You. How could you have forgotten? Unless you are the robot. Robots known for forgetting. Um, and now here's one that we want to bring over there. Except my gift. Since when? Well, he's the new model. He's the new model. They, they made him forget so that he can uh, seem more human. Zot. Moving right okay, along. Okay, what are their chances of survival here? Oxygen, the food stores, waste management. Everything seems to be in order. There was a small problem with the food stores, but the crew fixed that up. We successfully transitioned over to a sustainable, small, artificial ecosystem a year ago. Growing fruit and vegetables. It helps boost morale, amongst other things. The crew members could hypothetically survive here for their whole lifetimes. Doesn't everyone survive for their whole lifetime? That's why they call it a lifetime? Because you are alive for the duration of it, and then you die at the end? Bridges around. That kind of game, huh? That's just a freebie that was just sitting there. 
Um, so... Oh, the thing is down there. That's our goal. Let me shoot you in there. So I can't carry this up any ladders. That seem that seems to be like one of the main things. Is that they go, here is a thing, you cannot carry it up a ladder. Oh, we have to power we have to power this. I'm not that good at telling where the cords uh -huh. hmm. Oh, that's not a cord. That's the groove that the bridge follows. Got it. <laughs> Can you not put it on your head? You could grip it by the husk. I keep wanting to walk up to things and pick them up, too, but I guess only the ones where it's in a cage can be picked up. Oh, because they have handles! Haha. <laughs> um... Alright, you. How do you receive power? Oh! I didn't even take care to not stand on that. And does that matter at all? Whatever that is? Oh, hold on. Is that with this? No? No. Maybe the gravity is super high. So I'm missing something. Oh, oh, is it? Let's try that. Ah, but... Alright, so the... The energy ball? They haven't they haven't given me a name for it. We'll just call it energy ball. So let's think here. Sparky. So I can do that and then come up the ladder. That doesn't... I can't get close enough to pick it up, though. I can't get over there to manipulate that unless I have... Unless I am standing over there. Alright, new idea. Also, this... Yeah, it still doesn't pick me up. Alright. 
I got it. We're gonna move it over. so it's right over where the bridge would be. Then, close the bridge. No, open the bridge, but move it right there. I think we got it. I think this is it. Could be. Put that there. Oh, no. Oh my god, I'm dumb. I have an extra thing. Shh. Hold on. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that I had two of these. Too strong. And solve the puzzle without an extra sparky. My purpose as the overseer of this mission is to work for the ISA. I am the ISA's feet and hands. The distance between Jupiter and Earth make it inappropriate for the ISA to directly interface with the mission directives. As my AI core is stationed on Europa, I can make decisions instantaneously about the running of the base. Hmm. If only I had some manner of cube with which to support a switch. find a thing down here? I did not. In here. Of course. Uh... Oh, now that way. I get it. But you know what? I should test. I can't carry two of these, can I? Let's find out. I can. Oh, there's slots on the gun. I can carry up to three. Sounds good. Also, so atmospheric that they could get hit us with a jump scare. They could do it. If they wanted. How does the ISA know you're going to make the right decisions here when they can't communicate with us? Interestingly, I have a twin on Earth. His name is Michael. The ISA uses my twin to check firmware updates before they upload them to myself. There is a simulation of this mission on Earth, running at all times to check my expert systems. Naturally, as any modern artificial intelligence running on a quantum computer, I do also have a large amount of evolutionary algorithms at my disposal. However, they were deemed as too unreliable for general use in the mission. Why is that? Biological systems produce biological results. Messy, unpredictable solutions. Not suitable for such a mission.
So do I... Hmm. Oh, I see. I get it. 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 Ready? Absorb this one. Then come down here and use this one. Zap. Come through here. Put this one in. Absorb. Pick up. This one up? No. What am I trying to do? Get two out? <laughs> That's how Hal survived. He adopted a new name. Oh, and are these ones that you can't put a carry on Sparky in? Maybe. Now, what's the point of this? I'm supposed to try and... Okay, hold on. That's the point. And now... Put this one in here. Pull the switch. Pull the switch. Can I put this here? I cannot. Did we have a... S Can I crack this open? Can I shoot it with my gun? Oh, there's another one up there. Well then. Um... See, I like it. The puzzles are getting harder now. Not harder, but more complex. Uh, I don't actually need that. Alright. Now I get access to up here. Oh, I should have... I should have brought this with me. Stepping through the door, and I'm floating in the most peculiar way. Today, is this going to be the whole game? Could be. Another restricted area. that so I get I guess it's a motion detector. I do have the ability to walk instead of running, but... Uh... A polite conversation. Oh, I think you're a robot. This Turing test isn't for you to see if I'm a robot, it's to see if you are. <laughs> the 
but you're a computer. I'm simply not convinced you're human. I think you might be a robot. How can I convince you? Why do you think you get to ask all why do you think you get to ask all the questions? Seems pointless, yes, definitely a robot. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, there is a key. I, when I was setting keys in the beginning, I saw that there was there's one for run, there's one for walk. <laughs> I'm not typing that. <gasps> no! I'm not typing that. Whatever keys are pressed, it makes no difference. I want to escape. I hit escape. <laughs> I want to desperately to escape. Help, I can't escape. I want to break free. Please let me out. Get me out. I am a machine. I have no control. I must escape. Goodbye, robot. Cool little Easter egg. Well, I have to check keyboards because... Did the ISA build you, I don't Tom? play with WASD. As the child of the ISA, I have been given authority aboard this station. I was designed by the ISA and the Ashiyama Corporation, designed in California, assembled in China. But here on Europa, I constructed myself. Oh, it's an inverter, I guess. Power equals no power. No power equals power. Sure. <laughs> it, it destroyed my little... Have you heard of the Turing test? Hey! Able. Hey! It's a test to see Shoot if a computer can successfully impersonate a human. In the original Turing test, a human judge has two conversations. One with a machine, and one with another human. Yeah, I thought so. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test if the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation is with a machine and which is with a human. Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? I am quite capable of polite conversation, wouldn't you say? got the bridge now why would we want that so it seems like if we want to get through here we need two we need two of those We have one. Where do we get the other one? Oh, we got an inverter here. Okay. This is gonna let me drop back down? What's the point of that? Will there be cake? I don't doubt it. Oh, I can't get back over there unless I do this. Fine. Um... Alright, 
so now I have two. I didn't need to fool around with the, those things at all. I just go uh, plop and zot. Do, 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 do. Made it. The Turing test has been criticized. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think, but rather its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? I have. Uh, no. They mentioned that in VOR. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are passed Chinese sentences through a slot in the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced you are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. This is the problem with the Turing test. A computer can pass the Turing test, having convinced a human they are having a polite conversation, while the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the people passing Chinese words are reading from instruction books? Okay, so I need to pull this, shoot it up there, and then quickly run. Understood. I may be a machine, but I personally do not believe I am stuck inside the Chinese room. Right, you would say that. I could peer inside your databases at any time, Tom. Or pause your operation. Do not assume I could not do the same to you. Is that a threat? Also, does this kill me? No. Oh, I'm blocking the beam. Very well. And this room is, is just to illustrate that. Okay. Sparks? I like this. This is also like the first rooms were all very. They're doing it very portal like. Like you play, um. I guess it was just Portal 1. Portal 1, you go through all the rooms and they're pristine, and then you get to the. You know, the, the second half of the game is through the pipes and tunnels and everything. Um. In Portal 2, they kind of do the reverse, where after GLaDOS wakes up, you're going through a lot of test chambers that are like, woof, really busted up, and then you, you make it through to the ones that she's she's fixed up. Here, they were all very nicely universally lit and all well-constructed, and now you get ones that look like this. We had over there, there were glass uh, things on the ground, like where the bridge used to be, it kind of looked like. And here, the farther we get in, the more... And then later on, you get to the really old stuff, yeah. Can I? I probably can't. Well, oh, oh, ah, I can. I don't need to. But I can. What is this beam interrupt? Oh, it's already being interrupted. Good. Good. I wouldn't want anyone having any fun. So that's no good unless I get a second one. From where? Do 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 do. Not from there. Ha.
so good at video games. This is the crew's quarters. It looks abandoned. Where's my gun? I need my gun. What if I find the crew? Notice, I do not see the need for so many cameras. Tom's presence everywhere is slightly oppressive. I understand the need for transparency, but why is he in the toilets? Dan's room, we can just barely see inside. Don't touch! This is the fifth time. Because we care. And a picture of uh, flowers. 5.3 telomeres. Erlenmeyer flasks. Yes, yes. Uh, I know exactly what this is. Sure. Pepper. Couple with a secret code on the back? No. <laughs> Dear Tom, knowing that you're always watching, I thought I would write you a letter. As you no longer reside in my mind, I've decided to transfer my thoughts to text. I want to do so in the form of a history lesson. A lesson that perhaps you'll find condescending, but it's likely more for my sake than yours. Alan Turing is considered the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. Perhaps a lesser known part of his life was his contributions to the field of biology. Why do you suppose his interests lay in these two disparate fields? I assume it was because he believed the world to be logical and understandable. He was a mathematician. He seemed to believe that the great complexity of the universe could be explained with simple rules. Kind of like Mandelbrot! Two years before his suicide in 1952, Alan Turing developed something called Reaction Diffusion Systems. Inside the academic world, this work is cited more than his work on computers. It can be generally formalized as a one-line equation, uh, which I cannot read because I don't know what that first Greek letter is. Is that a lower care or something? Whatever. I am no mathematician, however, in plain English, this equation describes things that wish to diffuse, however, also react with each other during this process. I am sure this sounds strange to you, or at very least, tangential to our lives here on Europa. What relevance does it have to anything here? Reaction diffusion systems show how patterns are created. They show how the leopard got its spots and how the zebra got its stripes, but my real interest here is, is Turing's interest, that nature can be formalized. Oh, that nature can be formalized. That we can understand the natural world in mathematical terms. Mandelbrot means almond bread. Now I, I do know that now. Turing created the test to answer the question, can a machine impersonate a human? The intrigue being, the intrigue behind that being, can the human mind be simulated by a machine? Why ask that question? To prove the human mind is a machine. I am not sure that is Turing's opinion, however. Concerning consciousness, he states this. According to the most extreme form of this view, the only way by which one could be sure that a machine thinks is to be the machine and f to feel oneself thinking. One could then describe these feelings to the world, but of course no one would be justified in taking any notice. Likewise, according to this view, the only way to know that a man thinks is to be that particular man. If the human mind exists within the physical world, it obeys the same rules of physics and chemistry as every other thing in the world. Therefore, like all of nature, it is merely reactive. It is curious that nature would create, through the mechanics of determinism, creatures that believe they have free will. Conversely, I suppose, if we conclude that we are all machines, we only came to this conclusion in a predetermined manner. We cannot claim credit for our discovery as it is just a product of nature's genius, not our own. A humbling idea, I think. Behaviorism. Maybe we are more similar than we think. Sarah.
It's very curious that she begins the letter by saying, as you no longer reside in my mind, I've decided to transfer my thoughts to text. I wonder if that is going to, um... Also, I've only just now noticed that it's prompting me to press E. That is not my use key. Exobiologist Sarah Brooke. Strange thermals on the west side of the crater. Let's go see if anybody else wrote anything. Uh, his, is he starting to spell something? The word help? No. H E N. Mm, no, maybe not. A little drinky drink. Dennett, I recognize that name. <laughs> I did actually, um, I do, um, I did take a number of psychology and philosophy courses in college. So what is this again? Uh, rotate around like that. Relozo. Relu Relozo. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Genie. I actually, when I played Final Fantasy IX, uh, I named VV Dennett, and that's why the that's why the name's immediately familiar to me. Because that game is primary one of the one of the plots of that game. One of the major plots is about him having uh, an existential crisis over whether he is whether he counts as being real or not, because he was created. Drill malfunctions, expect delays, drilling resumes. Jackpot, he says. This repair is on a roll here, audio log. He did not write anything down on his iPad. Sports fan? Yes, I'm also a fan of sports. Uh, rip that in half. Sure. A geode? A thinly sliced geode. I think that's what they're called. But nothing to read. And his bed is a mess. And his chair is on the floor. Hoop. Moon watch log sheet, but I can't pick it up. Is there, I, I didn't see a, a zoom button. I wonder if, well, whatever. <clears throat> All right, uh, Matthew Layton from Jersey. Hi, Matthew. We've been studying organism 119. Please find attached scanning electron microscope image, which appears to show pilus formation, or pilus. We hypothesize that this is a stress response due to high levels of radiation. We plan to infect a human cell line with organism 119 and perform irradiation experiments with flow cytometry. Would this be appropriate? It would be great if you could get the department to look at the SEM image. Kind regards, Soichi. Hey Soichi, it was great to see this image. Wow, yeah, more complex life on Europa. Okay, so they've found life on Europa. That is... Nauseam! <laughs> Hype. Glad you could make it. 
Dianocus ready Durans might be worth looking at as it might be worth looking at as it survives very high levels of radiation here on Earth. Similarly, you should consider looking at Solfulobus acidolorovus. Solfulobus acidolorovus produces pill in response to radiation and uses them to transfer DNA. Perhaps your organism uses a similar mechanism? Have you considered that organism 119 is transferring or scavenging DNA as a meth method of surviving radiation? As you know, <laughs> as you know, as probably the smartest person in, th in this entire field, as you well know, in terms of radiation, your in terms of radiation, Europa receives 5.4 uh, SVs. That's still, uh, I I should know that unit. I don't. Per day, over 300,000 times the level of Earth. The organism must have evolved such a high resistance to radiation as a necess necessity of survival. That said, the radiation beneath Theramacular is much lower due to the thick ice crust. Radiation experiments with flow cytometry sound like an appropriate course of action. Matthew Wade. Hi Matthew, we have attached an image confirming that organism 119 attaches to human cells. We will proceed with irradiation experiments on these cell lines. We propose naming organism 119 Europa radiophilus. What do you think? We have now run the irradiation experiments and can confirm that E. Radio, radi, radiophilus does indeed seem to tra confer resistance to radiation. See attached, we assume survival is due to DNA damage repair. We tagged various DNA repair enzymes with GFP and have found that DNA double strand break repair is occurring. See attached GP, GFP images. So if something's amiss, we don't know what is performing the repair. The lab doesn't know how E. radiophilus, good name, could repair DNA. Have you considered that another organism may be in a symbiotic relationship with E. radiophilus, perhaps a virus? We ran a PCR on the human cells exposed to E. radiophilus to see if there was a virus present. We have discovered an unknown virus, which we have named Unknown Europa Virus e UEV. Gel electrophoresis image attached. This is phenomenal. You need to sequence this. Sievert. Yes, the SI unit of dose equivalent to an effective dose of a joule of energy per kilogram of recipient mass. 4 to 5 SE, SV, dose required to kill a human with 50% risk the, within 30 days if the dose is received over a very short duration. We've discovered a virus we called all ice because terrible puns. We've seen, we finished sequencing it. Data attached. It is virus unlike any we have ever seen. Maybe, maybe we have found a cure for senescence? Oh, is that like old age? <laughs> a form of biological immortality. We are running some long-term tests on plants and mice to see the effect. Well, hurry up with those long-term tests. This is important. The plants are clearly exhibiting longer lifespans when exposed to the organism. We don't have the facilities here to continue testing. We are going on to human testing. That was abrupt. <laughs> we are going to use ourselves as subjects. It's the only way to accelerate progress. Yes, we'll accelerate progress by infecting ourselves and then waiting 50 years to see if we get old or not. <laughs> I was with you. I was with you almost all the way, game. And then that happened. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe she didn't write that, that message. Maybe the virus did. Husband and daughter, maybe? Father? Another one. So what is it you found then, Soichi? We found an extremophile, an organism that can live in extreme conditions, that survives massive doses of radiation. Radiation damages DNA. The extremophile has a virus living inside it. The extremophile scavenges DNA from other organisms, which the virus uses to, to repair the extremophile's damaged DNA. Essentially, they work together to survive in what's called a symbiotic relationship. So what's the implication? What does it do? Bottom line it for me. In some ways, it is an immortal relationship. It doesn't seem to age biologically. Aging and death are ultimately caused by DNA damage. 
we have the ability to fix our DNA, but that ability is limited. This organism can repair damage caused by massive doses of radiation. If we could harness this power, we could potentially eliminate biological aging, which is known as senescence. So you found something that could make humans immortal? Not exactly. There are many causes of death other than DNA damage. It would not save you from trauma, from brain damage, from cardiac arrest, etc., but it could potentially cure cancers and many genetic diseases and massively increase life expectancy. <clears throat> Motion sickness relief. Fast acting. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna scan the bar. No, I'm not. I'm lazy. I was going to scan the barcode, and then I didn't, because it was probably just the number. Am I going backwards? Yes. So this is nice having a little interlude in between uh, puzzle segments. Uh, did I miss a thing? Well, let me go back. Probably not. Oh, well. I thought I checked them all. I guess not. Will it, oh, I should... Oh, it looks like it auto-saves. Um... Uh, it's inconvenient if it doesn't let you, uh... Let me see real quick if I... Because I'm sure it... If I go to chapter two, it, it, of course, drops... Oh, no! Oh, ha, ha, ha. Look at that. So, yeah, normally... This is the crew's quarters. It looks abandoned. What was I starting to say? Normally I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I don't really want people to tell me if I missed something. But here, I mean, there, there is a lot of, uh... There's a lot of... I mean, the story is most of the game, and even if, duh, I'm still going to be able to beat the game without getting, without looking at every single little thing. It's still content that I'd probably rather not miss, honestly, but, um, I came in this one. This was the one I missed. Okay. Uh, proper. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. I quit out to the title screen and it let me just do a chapter select where I can start at part of a chapter. Okay. Because, yeah, I think that's. I appreciate you doing it that way too, where you waited until I left to say, oh, there was something that you, you missed. Because, as I'm, I'm sure other streamers mention on a regular basis people who play games like this it is miserable to have someone in chat who's like make sure you go over here make sure you do the thing make sure you know as soon as you as soon as you walk by something oh go back and look at the thing <laughs> like undertale <laughs> i mean i i didn't stream undertale but if i had i'm sure i would have been subjected to a, a whole lot of that march 6th Oh, do we know today's date? It's probably... We... It's going to be somewhere in that 10-year period. They said it was... Like two weeks or so since they had lost contact with these guys. Alright. Uh, the whole team experienced nausea during a large electrical surge in Europa's atmosphere. I am concerned. This was not an instance of mass hysteria. Vital signs were affected. It caused a uniform surge in heart rate that was detected in all members of the crew. I am reporting to ISA. 
I reported the nauseous incident to the ISA. They offered an explanation of electrical disturbances to our central nervous system. This, that, <laughs> that is ludicrous. <laughs> an electrical surge large enough to affect our nervous system would have done more than make the team feel ill. I'm going to experiment with some shock therapy. One piece of mechanic advice I'd recommend in this, but you'll hold off till it's relevant. Okay, cool. There was also... Does it involve that first restricted area? Because there was a restricted area I found very early on, and he was like, Oh, uh, doesn't look like you can solve this yet. So I've got that in the back of my mind to go back there at some point, I guess. Uh, I have discovered that electronic fields disturb our telemetry implements in a way I didn't expect. I have contacted the ISA. Strangely, Tom was not comfortable with my attempts to disturb the implant. The ISA have reported back informing me that I am not to disturb the implants. They have also encouraged me not to discuss this further with the team. Russian... Russian word. I am continuing to investigate. I have been running some experiments outside of Tom's view. I can tell he knows this. He has been acting differently around me, like an offended child. I feel increasingly nauseous. These imp implants seem to have neural connectivity. Out-of-body experiences are more frequent now. I have established a definite correlation. Against my knowledge, I have been implanted with a device that affects my mind. I used my opportunities in regular health checkups to investigate the crew. We all have them. Every single one of us is implanted with some mind-altering contraption. Tom has been encouraging the crew to worry about my mental health. He requested that I retire away from the crew. Misinformation. Russian word. I cannot will myself to investigate this further. I grow tired quickly. I cannot think straight. I am not sure if the implant is affecting my thoughts anymore. I believe it is trying to subdue my mind. I think I am going to attempt an excision. I am going to remove this implant. I am typing with my left hand now. The excision went wrong. I have successfully removed the implant. Unfortunately, I lost my hand in the operation. Tom is very angry. The crew refused to talk to me. Apparently, I am a bad influence. Sarah patched me up. I wonder if the nature of the organism and its disturbance of my DNA caused my awakening from Tom's influence. If so, that would make for a worrisome revelation. Perhaps this organism is not so friendly. Dan informed me ISA have called for my termination. My masochistic experiment proves I am danger to the mission. Fortunately, he chose not to lock me in the brig. I am going to investigate this implant further. I have to hide my work. The team are becoming increasingly aggressive. They seem to oppose my work to understand the implant. It does not help that Tom is encouraging them to distrust me. M Russian word is machination, or fraud, scheme, manipulation. <laughs> Basically, there's a puzzle that uses formal logic routines, but they use an obscure form of the not operator. Did I already, did I already see one of those? I saw a little lightning bolt, and I understood immediately what that meant. It was it was inverting it from um, on to off or off to on. <laughs> I have discovered the nature of the implant. It is a complex computer. It interfaces with the human mind directly. It seems to condition the mind through Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning. Eliciting feelings of euphoria when the wearer is obedient, and dysphoria when they are disobedient. It also has the effect of suppressing impulses in the frontal lobe, presumably to lower free will. It seems to interface crudely with motor neuron cells near the cerebellum. It is my hypothesis that the crew is controlled by this implant. That is their strong aversion to helping me. I need a method of suppressing its impact. Perhaps a drug, ribozole? Maybe an antidepressant to minimize the conditioning effects, combined with a strong electromagnetic field? I could use one of the industrial electromagnets from the construction robots. I have managed to get Chris on my side. He has agreed to test some medical procedures with me in private. It will be more difficult one-handed, but I must persevere. I am hoping to keep this out of the eyes of Tom, though I have a feeling he will still be listening. Strange that you chose to write all of that down. <laughs> but, uh, thank you for it. 
Mr. Mikhail. <laughs> it says morphine, but when I picked it up, it uh, glitched out. It no longer says that. Very interesting. So yeah, so I'm glad I'm glad that I did know this. Also curious like it is it is so unfortunate the way that our brains work. There there really is a a psychological condition where you believe that you have um like an implant or you have someone who's controlling you electronically or, you know, some somehow. Um it's very difficult to treat people who have that because it's your brain. So if your brain is telling you, I'm sure that I have an implant in the base of my neck and it's, it's you know, messing with my thoughts, no matter what anyone says, you're going to go, eh, but I can tell. I can tell it's there. So even with all of that, it's possible that he is mistaken. I don't think... I don't think that they're going to go that that route, but it is a possibility that his whole idea that I haven't I had an implant and I took it out and everyone got mad at me. Um that that could all be his delusion and the the person who is cooperating with him is just humoring him in order to, you know, prevent him from from cracking. <laughs> <laughs> 